Hello everyone, it's Victor speaking. And um, today I, I want to talk about second house and our spending habits. By the way, this is a part of uh, how to spot money in your birth chart course. Um, and also if you want to learn more about um, money and money making aspects in your chart, then I will be doing a webinar on part of fortune which also reveals a lot about how we can make money and also what profession, what area of life we might be lucky at. Uh, money has become, of course, very important in our society and it has always been. Um, who doesn't love money, right? But not everyone does everything for money though. For example, uh, people having a stellium in their sixth house might be working a lot for the sake of working, as they want to feel useful and productive. People who have a very emphasized 10th house might be longing for recognition and focusing on long-term goals. So again, money might not be the major um, reason why they work extremely hard. People who have outer planets, for instance, in the second house can have a, a weird relationship to money. And plenty say that there are, they are not materialistic, as it does take time to integrate these planets in our lives. So they tend to be more spiritual, they tend to be um, not having a great connection to financials. And um, one of the reasons why I've decided to make a video was because I was giving a, a career advice to a very good friend of mine who wanted to take a loan to buy a property. But I saw in her chart that she was going to lose her job. So I strongly recommended her not to. Um, but at, this, at, at that time, it was quite weird to tell her this because she is the type of person who can live on a very minimum amount of uh, money as well. Um, she's got a Taurus rising sign. She's got four planets in the sixth house including her chart ruler. And those people love working uh, and Taurus is extremely good at saving money as well anyway. So this has inspired me to make a video on uh, um, spending habits because this lady had Uranus on her rising sign in the last uh, couple of years, especially uh, 2020. And you know, Uranus can bring us some ups and downs. So the second house shows the way we can earn money, but it also shows whether we can maintain our bank balance or not. To a certain extent, it will also reveal to us how we relate to money, or do we have any type of money programs which is blocking us of, uh, blocking us making more. So for instance, people with the sun in the second house, or even Leo on the cusp, tend to actually make good money. But at the same time, they tend to spend it as well because they have to keep up with the glamour. They tend to overspend on themselves. They like luxurious things. The core of Leo is actually to shine. And if you want to um, say that every single planet is a source of money in the second house, and the reason being is because in most cases, it's going to be um, trying in your midheaven meaning it's very supportive towards your uh, profession and your social status. So it's always worth having a look at what uh, the planet can indicate to us, what type of job uh, we can do to make money. And Sun actually is an authority figure, uh, authority in their own fields. Um, they are very good at administrative or official roles. Uh, they are very good at making business contacts. They tend to be freelance workers and it's a very good idea for them to turn their hobbies into a profession. Usually they've got, um, it's like a golden touch to anything. So with the sun, I usually recommend that these people need to be somehow um, a CEO. They have to be leading a company they have to be in management position. If you have got moon uh, in the second house or cancer on the cusp, 
they could actually be emotional spenders. Um, and especially worth having a look at the moon phase of your natal chart as well. We have got eight moon phases and the passive moon phases tend to be tend to spend more money, for instance, on their um, loved ones, on their children, on their family home, and they tend to forget about themselves. Um, now, when we talk about moon in the second house, you need to be making money through public tastes. You need to be working with the general public. So it could be commodities, food, domestic affairs, uh, you can be very good at nurturing or caring uh, for women or children. Even music, poetry belong uh, to the moon as well. And of course, with the problem with the moon is because she is a shape shifter. Uh, she is changing, you know, she is uh, moving quite fast. So their financial, uh, their financial can be fluctuating. But they can also earn money through family businesses. Or as I said, taking care of others, maybe um, a restaurant business or becoming a chef, cooking and so forth. Then uh, having Mercury in the second house, well, Mercury is, uh, is like a jack of all trades. So Mercury has got plenty of skills. They could be good at sales or in any type of communication fields. They might like uh, the latest gadgets or communication devices. So, for instance, they might buy the best phone or the best laptop. And that's the reason why they might have got slightly bit of issue of saving money. Now, what type of job Mercury should be choosing? Uh, they, should, they, could be, uh, they, they, they are able to make money for, from verbal, intellectual, um, artistic um, jobs, uh, something which is related to the hand. The field of communication and transportation is also a good choice for them. Maybe establishing an agency or working for an agency. Mercury is the planet of bridge building, so they are very good at connecting uh, people. Um, these people tend to be working on commissions or somehow they, they um, even can be uh, um, a contractual relationship to, to people. Um, they could be very good at handling credit statements, costs, prices, expenses and balances. Uh, they usually are very flexible. So um, with Mercury, I feel like uh, they try different type of jobs before they arrive and they feel that, yeah, this is going to be the field I want to do the rest of my life. Having Venus in the second house is actually an interesting one because people tend to believe that this is a good placement. But we shouldn't be forgetting that Venus loves spending money. Venus loves comfort, fashion, stylish things. Um, they love taking care of their appearance, but also appearance is one of their uh, major assets because it can appeal to others. So with their appearance, they can attract money as well. Now with Venus, the key part again is the social interaction. It could indicate artistic or creative fields, entertainment, culture, or anything to do with your hobbies, something you enjoy doing, art and decoration, because they have got, a, a, they are very stylish. They could be providing beauty and comfort, but as I said, their money approach could be a little bit placid. Money somehow comes through uh, by valuing nice things. And then also um, uh, the next planet, which is uh, worth talking about is Mars or having Aries actually on the cusp. These people are very driven to earn money, but Aries is a fast sign. So they tend to spend the money fast as well. Uh, Mars has got this competitive nature. So they might want to get the best things for themselves. They might want the latest car, the fastest car, anything which is fast really. So uh, Mars is good for any type of competitive fields, 
physical labor, um, uh, something to do with training, something which requires your expertise, Mars rules production, manufacturing, tools, even sports, construction business belongs to Mars. Um, um, and um, even something to do with mechanics, engineers, cars uh, also belong here. So car industry, for instance, could be very, very good for a Mars in the second house. Also Jupiter, which is quite a lucky one to have in the second house. And it's not because Jupiter is the planet of expansion and abundance, but because it gives optimism and faith to the native. And therefore, they are able to attract money well. They might believe, actually, that money can be spent as the universe will give it back to them. And I am a firm believer by having five planets in Sagittarius that the way you program your self, your brain, uh, that is always going to help you to attract the best quality things into your life. Yes, Jupiter has got this greedy quality as well. So we might need to be careful with um, having Jupiter there because obviously uh, universe does not like greed much. Something needs to be given back as well at the same time. Um, having Jupiter in the second house indicates that you can do uh, any type of professional uh, field, business, something to do with mass media, advertising, teaching, working for large companies, even you can work in a legislation field or religion, philosophy. Um, Jupiter in the second tends to make us uh, believe that money is the one which makes us valuable and important because it gives us a royalty feeling. Um, but having Jupiter in the second is like acting like a guardian angel. So these people uh, tend to not run out of money, but Jupiter also has got quite a, an interesting spending habit. So if they buy something, they might be buy, buying them in bulk or they might be buying the expensive ones. Then we've got, oh, and then I would like to mention that even though I have got Aries on the second house cast, so, um, since the age of uh, 14, um, I have been earning money and I have always been very driven to earn money. But I do have Mars in the sign of Pisces, which is a Jupiterian territory. So, and um, this describes me very well. Pisces is all about spending money and giving it away. It's a very charitable sign. And I tend to do that. So, yeah, whatever I said about Jupiter and Mars uh, pretty much describes my spending habits and my earning style as well. Then we've got Saturn. Well, wow, Saturn is very misunderstood in the second house. You go online and then you can read that, oh, it brings uh, poverty uh, and you're gonna be um, poor. And it's completely not true. Um, I think why Saturn can bring, bring you poverty in the second house is so much to do with your own fears. The fear of poverty uh, and negative energy attracts negative outcome. You should not forget that. Actually, I have seen some of the richest people with second, uh, Saturn in the second house. Yes, they were quite uh, conservative about their money. Uh, they were very focused to make any at all. And they were, they tend to live a modest life as well. Saturn gets better with age. So true, you must put effort and time into making money. Money management should be one of the key success factors for you. It should be very, very important. Um, I do believe that having any planet in the second house is a blessing. Uh, because it is always going to show you a source of money, an opportunity of how to make money. Um, having Uranus in the second, oh, by the way, sorry, I forgot to mention what Saturn uh, could indicate as a professional field. So with Saturn, you might be making money slowly. You're going to have to make calculated moves and you're going to have to work hard. 
Uh, second row is any type of traditional businesses, management, trading, security. Uh, even education could be an option for you because Saturn rules the masters. Um, and Saturn must have a financial discipline. Uh, there is no point in cheating with Saturn because karma is going to come around. Then having uh, Uranus in the second house is actually known for ups and downs in financials. And it is actually true for Uranus transits to your second house as well. I have noticed that those natives actually who have got Uranus in the second tend to get their money in chunks. So they might get a bigger amount every free month and then nothing for a while. And the key to Uranus is uh, to avoid boredom. You need, to a you need to be able to feel free. You need to be able to do something which creates excitement for you. Yes, Uranus tend to live on financial edges. Uh, Uranus has got this adrenaline level or rush when they earn money or when they go to the bank, uh, bank um, uh, machine. Um, unfortunately, those who have got Uranus in their second house tends to get laid off more often as well uh, than others. So one of the best things Uranus can do is to become self-employed because it's going to give them the uh, freedom they require and they're not going to get laid off by their bosses either. Uh, they need to do something which is popular, uh, maybe related to technology or even astrology. The key is to do something which they enjoy. Um, uh, Uranus can also indicate that you can be working with dealing with humanitarian questions. So something to do with science or even human relations, counseling, civil or government contracts, even electronics, high tech fields are very suitable for Uranian people. Uranus in the second house indicates that you've got a unique talent and be original, as original as possible. Yes, uh, as I said, it could indicate unexpected gains and unexpected losses as well. Uh, Uranus in the second house can bring an overnight success. Having Neptune um, in the second house, well, the main topic here is going to be the boundaries. I have actually seen people having codependency issues when Neptune is in their second house. Uh, they might be playing the rescuer or the savior role, uh, or they want to be saved financially by someone. Um, they tend to be in a financial mud from time to time, and in many cases, actually, they confuse money with love. Uh, I will only be liked if I buy gifts, or I only will, uh, you know, I want to be I love somehow. Uh, they might actually bail, uh, bail uh, others out of their financial problems. Neptune is very, very charitable. Neptune acts like a guilt center. So that is how people can, can get to you. And um, for instance, by telling you that, oh, I don't have anything to eat. I can't, be the, I can't pay the bills. I'm going to get evacuated and so forth. So having Neptune in the second house tends not to know how much money they ask uh, or how much money they should ask when they provide a service. So they tend to undervalue themselves. And the result is that they are going to be underpaid also. So these people have to work on their spiritual value system, seeing where the problems come from. So with Neptune, you can do anything to do with communities, even art and entertainment. Um, again, working with the public, poetry, art, aesthetic fields, you might have got a very creative imagination going on. So anything to do with music, dance, even sea, marine matters, liquids. So alcohol business, wine business also can be very good. Uh, you can um, actually work for charities. Uh, even medicine field belongs here. 
But as I said, Neptune takes her time or takes its time to feel worthy. Neptune is very good at giving advice, but they need to be more organized with their budgets. And then having Pluto, well, probably Pluto um, gives us um, dramatic career turns in our lives. Uh, work might be black and white for these natives. Uh, Pluto is all about good versus evil, but uh, Pluto is definitely about, you know, rising above initial challenges. It's like the phoenix bird rising from the ashes. So Pluto can do a, a, a very good turnaround around their financials if they want to. Um, they tend to have uh, very painful early experiences around money and self-worth coming from their family. Um, uh, usually parents are very controlling or they are trying to control the child with money. Now, having uh, Pluto um, in the second house could indicate governmental type of words or major cooperation, mass production, uh, programming. Um, but they tend to also belong to um, groups <coughs> who might jeopardize their financials. Um, Pluto, uh, with Pluto, you can even somehow help the minorities. Um, advertising is also very good because Pluto is very good at manipulating others. It has got this magnetic attraction to it. Um, so business manipulation, definitely um, something which Pluto can uh, uh, consider here. It could be something to do with death and birth. It could be something to do with surgeries or the metaphysics as well. Um, and Pluto always wants uh, a profession which pays them very, very well. Because at the end of the day, that's the planet of power and they want to rise to power. So um, a very short um, description of, um, you know, how to deal with your money uh, questions with astrology. And if you, would, if you would like to go deeper and having a look at um, your chart, how it might manifest and what, what's the best ways of making money, then uh, I put my link below and then you can book a reading with me. Thank you very much for your attention and see you very shortly with a new video. Don't forget to uh, uh, press the notif notification bell and also just press a like as well. Give us some love. Thank you. Bye-bye.